Rajiv, before we before we let you go and bring in our next um, guest, just a quick a quick question for you. But what's the most interesting digital transformation initiative that you've put in place at the firm recently? Yeah, it goes back to I think what Peter was mentioning in the last session and uh, what you know Michelle was alluding to just now. I think the biggest change that uh, I have seen, of course, you are uh, you know privy to the kind of uh, cutting edge uh, AI and machine learning algorithms that we've implemented in the firm. Uh, but that is history. I think what is more exciting for me is the fact that we've got our people to be curious enough to start to learn how to develop these technologies, not just be users, but to say that, okay, this is a great opportunity. If everything is suddenly, you know, getting digitally transformed, I want to play a part in it. And uh, that's, I think, the biggest win for me, that instead of, you know, a few of us bearing the brunt of all the, the technology and the transformation, more and more people are now learning programming. You know, this week, uh, four or five of us are uh, enrolled in a week-long session just to learn coding and programming. And uh, they are like co-creating the future. And with, with the, you know, with the low code and the no code uh, application development platforms that are out there, I think the future is uh, absolutely impossibly bright. I don't think we could have envisioned or envisaged this uh, six months ago. So, so that's been, you know, a big, uh, big learning. And Michelle, I completely agree with you what you mentioned on the people front. When I look at the cohort of uh, people in our organization or elsewhere, I clearly see, you know, two very different cohorts. One who's the converted from within and the other who's kind of doing it because of extrinsic forces. Uh, regarding gamification, the, all the theories of gamification that I've read, they say that gamification only helps if there is intrinsic motivation. But if there is no intrinsic motivation, uh, gamification will only take you up to a certain point. These points, badges, leaderboards won't get you anywhere you know, beyond a certain point. So, so those are my two cents on our experience. So I would love to jump in and say, I love that you use the word curious. I keep saying to my students, I have a bunch of civil procedure students right now. The one thing I keep saying to them is be curious. Like yeah. before you ask me a question, go, go look up, go, go. If that's the one thing I am trying to teach them, forget civil procedure. It's curiosity, right? R Rajiv, I, I loved your comment about the two cohorts. Uh, and I think that's one of the, you know, cultural, I think it's all a footnote to culture and legal culture. Yes. And what is it going to take to make that culture change? And I'd just like to pose a question to you, which is, you know, um, now you're managing a legal organization, whether you're in-house, whether it's a law company, whether it's a firm, it doesn't matter. And you, you recognize the, the, the two cohorts. What do you do um, where the entrenched cohort the ones who typically have the most say are the ones who are sort of stuck in their old ways. The younger ones who I couldn't agree with you more have such a potential to do better um, uh, are, are generally, you know, sort of drowned out. What do you do to change that? What's going to change that dynamic in your opinion? Yeah. So, you know, firstly, I think uh, you you presumed I'm an attorney. I'm not. I'm a management graduate uh, working as CEO in a law firm. Uh, That's why and, you're so bright <laughs> and get right to the point. So uh, what I learned all my life, uh, I've learned to unlearn now, which is that, you know, top down is the one way in which it works. Uh, I know for sure that it uh, doesn't. Uh, what I try to do is something which I call the theory of symbiotic osmosis, which is to say that, you know, if there is a cohort, which is doing well, and there is a larger cohort which is in kind of which is kind of stuck and uh, not adopting change. Then what you try and do is slowly move the cogs, you know, from one cohort to another by making case studies, by the typical cultural things. Uh, you make stories around people who've had success. You showcase them. You put them up on your walls. You know, you talk about them in town hall meetings, and then suddenly people realize that you know I must be on that side. That way, the motivation to move to the other side comes from within rather than as something they are doing because somebody ordered them or asked them or even requested them very humbly to do. So that is what has worked. It's painfully slow as compared to the corporate top-down uh, quick approach. But I think, you know, slow is permanent, fast is, you know, reversible. You know, you said it's, you're, you. so there's this, there's new, like you said, the research on change 20, 15 years ago used to be top-down. And then about I don't know, five to 10 years ago was if we want to change, we go through the middle. And now there's a lot of research that totally supports what you're doing, which is 
finding small pockets, groups of people, and then and they change and then other people notice it. And it's like about kind of like creating a mo movement. I like to call it little bonfires. So um, there's a lot of uh, research that supports that what you're doing really makes a ton of sense. And we really appreciate you coming on. Um, Thank you. Lovely talking to you all. all right. Really a pleasure.